everybody. Welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I am your host, Tom Burritt, and this is episode 53. Today's axiom, why we teach at any level, uh, is um, something that came up through uh, an email that was sent to me recently. But we really have two, um, two focuses to the show today. And uh, the first, uh, before we get to the axiom, the other focus is um, just some, some announcements and some things that I want you guys to be aware of. So if you can just hang in there for a little bit of talk here about some stuff coming up and uh, some things um, that I've been working on over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we'll get to the axiom here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm coming off this terrible cold. But just got back from a, a, a great trip to Baylor. So if there's any Baylor peeps watching, thank you so much, you guys. I had a great time up there. I uh, love what you guys are up to. And um, had a great time talking to you guys, especially about social media and um, web presence and all that stuff. So that was a lot of fun. It was nice to work that into a clinic finally. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really uh, getting excited. We're just about three weeks away, I think, something like that, to uh, our uh, what we uh, drummers, percussionists call PASIC, Percussive Art Society International Convention. And uh, I want to do some really, really fun things uh, with you guys since I'm hoping that many of you will be there. Um, I'm not exactly sure exactly what we're going to be doing yet, but uh, Percussive uh, Art Society now has a presence with Twitter, and so maybe we could use some hashtags about some of the things we're talking about at PASIC so we can just search the hashtag PAS. Maybe we'll, we'll decide maybe in, in the PASIC preview issue, which will be a uh, PASIC preview uh, episode, which will be coming soon. Um, but it might be nice to look up, um, assign a hashtag and look up what, what you guys are saying about uh, clinics and presentations and all that while we're there. Um, but, you know, I thought it might be nice if we could all get together. Uh, there will be two times. Um, well, I'll, I'll have some, um, some booth time at the Steve Weiss booth on Friday at 3 o'clock and then at the Maltech booth at, on Friday at 10. So I'll probably shoot for that 10 o'clock time on that Friday, maybe 10.30. We could all meet at the Maltech booth. Anybody who has association or listen to the show, you know, I don't ask for much. I don't really ask for anything from you guys. But if you're going to be at PASIC, it would be really fun, to, uh, especially if we haven't met to um, just to kind of have a meetup maybe at the Mountain booth or something during the 10 to 11 hour on Friday. So when, I, when we get to the, P, to the, to the PASIC preview uh, episode, we will talk about that. So <clears throat> I'm also performing at the ZMF session at 2 o'clock on Friday and then also talking and presenting at the keyboard, fest, uh, keyboard festival, keyboard percussion panel uh, discussion at 12 o'clock on Saturday. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff that's sort of working around itself at, 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 um, at PASIC uh, coming up. And if you, um, if you want to see the updates, uh, let's, let's get Twitter going while we're there. Let's make sure we're each following each other and uh, we can kind of know what's going on. And maybe we'll try to throw some sort of impromptu, spontaneous uh, meetup or something somewhere. That might be fun. Um, I've been working really hard the last couple of weeks on thomasburritt.com. Uh, if you've been following my Twitter stream, you know that. Um, there's a free stuff page where there's free sheet music. The, all three Molivas are up there for download. Just go ahead. You can have at those. There's also a, a, a fairly lengthy 30-minute long video about Steven Script. So all of those people that have been contacting me um, in Brazil and all over the world, please, that's for you guys if you want more specific information about my sound. It's a very condensed 30 minutes on what I think about sound and Steven Script, some of the specifics of what you should and what you shouldn't do. Uh, we're going to strike the bars. I hope you find it helpful. Something I did a while back and just trying to figure out what to do with and what the heck it's going to, you know, rather than sitting on my hard drive, now it's actually there and useful, hopefully, to some of you. Uh, and then the last thing on that page that I've added is my, is my final document from Northwestern University. Um, it's about 100 pages long. I sat for about an hour and a half last night scanning each page into uh, my computer. Uh, and it's just been sitting on my shelf, and now I have it digitally archived, and I thought, what the heck, I might as well put it up there. So it's all about um, a performer's analysis of two works, um, John Sari's Night Rhapsody and uh, Joseph Schwantner's Velocities. So um, please check that out if that interests you. Uh, sounds kind of geeky, but uh, maybe it is, but uh, I think it's actually, um, you know, it's meant to not be too geeky, but helpful for the performer, and hopefully will lead to better performances of both those pieces. And that's also a process that you can use in a lot of, and really anything you learn uh, piecewise in the future. So I hope you check that out. Um, just totally free. You know, there's nothing in it. I just want to get my ideas out there, and I hope you guys can check that out. I do ask, though, that if you send me some feedback, you know, even if it's 
you know, this stinks, or what, have you thought about this, or why didn't you cover that? I just would love to hear from you guys that have checked that out. Okay, so <clears throat> a lot of work on thomasburrett.com. Um, as always, it's best when you guys can follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the show. Um, and I always, I usually follow everyone back, and it's just so we can, you know, kind of be shooting each other. Um, I love the interactions throughout the week with you guys, so um, please, I encourage you to do that. <clears throat> it's always fun. Um, yeah, so I think that's, thank you for sitting through all that. Now we're going to get today's axiom, which is uh, why we teach at any level. I got an email from, um, let's see, from Derek Stoughton, who uh, actually is a past student of mine. He was one of my first students here at UT, and he's teaching in uh, the McKinley, uh, <clears throat> sorry, McKinney, Texas. And he's, uh, he, he left me a nice email. I, I was watching Progression X as I always do, and I have an idea for a future show. Would it be possible for you to talk about the importance of students playing in percussion ensemble and how it enhances listening skills, abilities as a percussionist, and develops musicianship all at the same time? I'm really trying hard to instill that with my students, and I'd love to get some of your thoughts on that. Well, <clears throat> that's a uh, great uh, email, Derek. Thank you very much for that. Um, and, and he goes, by the way, I love the show. And I watch it all the time, and he's telling his students, which I want everybody to do, especially if you're a teacher, please tell your students if you find this helpful. Um, so <clears throat> I think your question is a really good one, and I think too often, this is what, one of the, my soapbox issues, we don't uh, think about enough about teaching musicianship when we do percussion ensemble. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's large or small, although I think you're going to learn a lot in different situations versus playing large percussion ensemble pieces versus chamber music. Um, but <clears throat> I think the thing is that, you know, every opportunity you have with your students should be based around learning something, teaching musicianship. So when we do, uh, we do, for example, we do lots of chamber music here at, at the University of Texas, uh, and most of the time, like our, our upcoming concert on November 3rd, I'm just going to be sitting in the audience for the whole show. And um, there's so much students can learn from having to get through a piece together and communicating with each other. And it's really the only time that they really learn basic uh, chamber music skills. And we try to take that level, take the level of that to the highest level. So when they find themselves in the future in their performing careers, working with non-percussionists especially, uh, they know how to play chamber music. They know how to listen. They know how to balance. They know how to really key in with whoever it is they have to key in on rather than just getting in their own little world and relying on a conductor. Um, chamber music for percussion is difficult because there isn't a lot of repertoire out there that has mixed instruments with percussion. Um, so it's really the only opportunity our students will have to learn what it means to be a chamber player. And uh, I've found some of the coolest and greatest things I've ever done as a performer have been with different chamber ensembles. And if I didn't have that chamber focus uh, when I was in college, I would have been in big trouble. So chamber music is very, 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 very important. And we, we really focus on that here because it's really the only opportunity to learn how to be a chamber player which is something I think every musician would uh, agree is important and would find helpful. Uh, so it's all about preparing students. It's not to get an A, <clears throat> you know, a rating or a 1 rating or to make your program look good or anything else. It's all because it should be benefiting the student. And I think here in Texas that sometimes definitely gets lost, at, especially at the high school level. So all you high school teachers out there, be training your students. If you get a 1 because of that, that's fantastic. But keep your focus on individual musicianship. Uh, in developing teaching concepts. Uh, in larger pieces, we do do some large works here as well. Uh, in that situation, we're also teaching um, balances, and we try different sticks, and we all, we, we're teaching um, balancing as an ensemble. Uh, so there's lots you can learn from that perspective, too. But um, make sure, as you're uh, working with your kids, that it's about developing musicianship. Our students also play a lot of multiple setups, so they're learning that in, in percussion ensemble. Um, sometimes I don't even make my students do multi-percussion because of that. So um, we also do some ethnic ensembles. We have a steel pan ensemble. Sometimes we'll do some African drumming just to give them some experiences. And, and I don't love that stuff, but again, it's good experience for them. It's teaching musicianship, and it's developing the students. So that's what it's all about. So that's today's axiom. Um, it's a real quick one today, um, but I just wanted to get you guys some updates on what was going on and what I was up to. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for watching. And uh, today's question of the episode is, I want to know, your, I want to hear your thoughts on what you learned about percussion uh, through Percussion Ensemble. And uh, I didn't obviously cover very much today as far as that topic goes, so I'd love your thoughts. What did you learn 
when you uh, when we're in your group or you know anything along those lines would be great. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.